What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the hard to find Zack Snyder's Justice League on 4K Blu-ray. This isn't going to be a review on the movie, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the video and the audio quality. But before we jump into it, if you're new to the channel and you're into movies and home theater, consider tapping the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot on 35mm, it's got a 4K DI, it's rated R. Runtime is 242 minutes and the aspect ratio is 1.33. So you will have black bars on the sides of your display. It'll look similar to the way that the remaster of Batman vs Superman looks. It's also got about the same amount of graininess as BVS as well. Now if your player or your display can zoom in, you can crop the image to fit a 16x9 screen, but then the film grain is going to look even heavier and you'll be cutting off some useful information on the top and the bottom of the screen. Zooming in works sometimes and other times it's very clearly meant that this movie's meant to be seen for this particular aspect ratio. Another thing in common with BVS and Man of Steel is the color palette. The bright Marvel-esque colors of the 2017 version of Justice League is gone. We now get Snyder's dark muted colors from start to finish. So colors aren't going to be bright and vibrant, they're going to be dark, dingy, and gritty looking. There are, however, some nice bright daytime shots on the mascara. Even though the colors are dull, the HDR makes the white clouds and the entire skyline light up brightly while keeping the various shades of whites and grays from becoming blown out. Another interesting thing about this scene is the audio mix, which is in Dolby Atmos. Just like the HBO Max stream, this is pretty much a static mix rather than one with a bunch of moving objects, like in BVS and Man of Steel. There's still a little movement up in the corners, but nothing else that's moving dynamically overhead. That being said, it's still got some great surround effects that fill every channel. You can hear the parademons and arrows flying overhead, and the mother box does get flung throughout the lower channels. There's some impressive HDR specular highlights from the Flash's electricity and the explosions at Steppenwolf's hideout will definitely make you squint. I found that the black levels were super dark and rich with good shadow detail, which is obviously important because most of the film is dark. And coming from the digital stream, you don't get the occasional compression artifacts, so the image is tighter and crisper overall. It isn't chaos walking type of crispiness, but it is a nice boost over the HBO Max stream. Along with the more stable image on physical media, the digital effects are going to look more resolved. Textures like grass and snow are more refined, and little nuances like facial features and all the textures on Superman's costume appeared even more detailed. Now there are certain effects that still look oddly finished like the pedestal the mother box was on, but for the most part I thought the CG effects blended in seamlessly with the practical stuff, the dark side battle in chapter 7 disc 1 being one of the main highlights. The audio for this fight is one of the best sounding scenes. You've got lanterns flying from above, blasting away to the lower channels, more parademons flying from front to back, and people fighting in the background. I thought base response was good during the attack in chapter 6 disc 2 when Batman starts blowing everything up, but I didn't feel it was as robust or reached as deeply as Man of Steel and BVS. It's still good and hits hard, but it just didn't make my subs work as hard as the previous two movies. Soundstage is just what you'd expect. It's huge and expands through every channel in your system. The musical score is rocking in this version and has a very different feel from the 2017 version. And the dialogue was always easy to hear even when all the action gets chaotic. So for audio, I'm gonna go with a 9.5. This mix still plays out like an awesome 7 channel mix with some height channel activity for the big action parts. The big difference if I remember correctly was that the HBO Max stream was a bit lower in volume and more compressed sounding. The disc version is louder and more detailed, which made hearing the effects easier to locate. I still think this could have sounded more immersive with better ambiance for the non-action portions, but the overheads and the surrounds do come to life for the big action stuff. Still, it's an awesome sounding movie and one of the best sounding ones I've heard this year. For video, I'm gonna go with a 9.4. As mentioned earlier, the image is tighter and more stable over the digital stream. There's some great colors with highlights that jump off the screen. There's a fair amount of grain for the grain lovers and an interesting aspect ratio which will surely make people love or hate the movie. Still, if you're a fan of the Zack Snyder movies, then this is a definite must own. Now, I'd like to send a shout out to Brass Tacks for getting me this copy of the movie since you can't get it in the US just yet. So you will have to import it. I'll try and leave some links for it down below in the video's description. So those are my thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League. Do you prefer the Whedon cut or the Snyder cut? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop by our Patreon page. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you again in the next video.